everybody. This is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me for this month's Stretch the Sketch. And as always, I'm so excited to be participating in this hop. For this month, we have a page maps sketch, and I am stretching this 12 by 12 inch sketch into a two page layout. I've been trying really hard lately to get some older photos scrapbooked. So I picked out a album for my older daughter and one for my younger daughter, and I've been concentrating on trying to get these older photos onto pages and the albums complete. For this layout, I'm using a die cuts with a view pad called Treasures, and I am using these four photos that I've arranged in the same way that you can see in the sketch. In the background, there's a white piece of paper. That is a 12 by 18 inch piece of paper. That's how I get my cardstock that I use for mixed media. It comes in 12 by 18 inch strips. I cut it back a few inches and then I cut it in half. So now I'm attaching down the white paper, which I have coated already with some white gesso, just in case I want to do some mixed media. And I'm just using some strips of the pattern paper. I like that paper. It just looked like it was a good match for the age that my daughter was at the time that these photos were taken. Now I'm layering. I'm, first I attempted to layer some of the pictures and then I decided that I was not going to layer them. Then I started adding in some other elements. I am trying to use those same shapes that are on the sketch, a circle, that rounded off square shape. I have the scallop circle and I'm hoping that I can get all of these shapes to fill up that space on top and it just didn't end up working out. I felt like I was never going to be able to fill that space in. So I thought it would be better to just use one large element. So here I'm using a stencil. I got this at Michael's uh, recently and they had a big sale and I love stencils and they had a whole bunch of stencils in the clearance area. And then when I scanned most of them, they weren't on sale, but this one was only a dollar. So I grabbed this one. I absolutely love it. And I'm, it's one of those self-adhesive stencils and that worked out really well in this particular situation because the, of the fact that I'm using two pieces of paper and otherwise the stencil would have floated around or I would have had to do each side separately, but this really worked out well. I'm using some Heidi Swap texture paste there. It's glittery and it's a blackish color. I'm also going in with some gold paint. I am trying to just make the stars gold. And then when I peel it back, I was really happy with it. And I did go and wash the stencil right away, just so you know. Now I'm positioning my photos back onto the layout again and trying to think of the next thing that I want to do. I took out a punch and I punched out some black borders for each side of the pattern paper. I'm just gluing that down. I just like the way it created a barrier between the mixed media background or the white background and the pattern paper. Now I'm going around each of those photos. Earlier on, I had mounted them on black paper. They're all mounted on a little bit of black. And then around the black, there are two photos that have the yellow border and two photos that have the brown border. And those are also from the pattern papers that were in that stack. I used Tim Holtz Distress Oxide in black soot to ink the edges. Now I'm gonna go in with some sprays. I'm pulling the colors out of the pattern paper. I'm using a blue color. This is a Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist and I'll have all the colors in the description box. And I thought that this color blue was a good match to the color that was in the paper. I had a little bit of trouble with the orange, but I'll talk about that in a few moments. So I'm just building up some layers. I just want to put it along the top. And another thing that I wanted to mention is that I did dry the texture paste thoroughly before I put anything on top of it. 
I tried there also to put on a darker blue. I didn't love the darker blue. It did add a little bit of variation to the background that I like, but I sopped most of it up with my paper towel because I wanted it to remain light and match that color that was in the pattern paper. So now I put down that orange and it's looking a little brownish orange to me and I do go back in a little while and try to fix that. I'm adding some white splatters and now I'm going to attach down all of my photos with the ATG adhesive. So as far as the sketch goes, I did end up using the configuration of the photos and instead of using all of those separate elements, I just use the large element in the center. And then I end up putting my title on the upper left hand corner where that circle and those grid lines are on the sketch. And although my layout doesn't really look a lot like the sketch, I feel like sketches are a jumping off point and if that's what gets you started scrapbooking, I feel like that's all that matters. I'm taking this scrap of paper, it's a map paper, and I'm cutting out some corners. I also cut out some blue corners. I cut out a bunch of the footage because that's repetitive. So I glued all those down, except for that one that I forgot, <laughs> with my ATG adhesive. And now I'm going back in and I'm just sopping up some of that orange. And I'm putting on what I hope is a brighter orange that'll match the pattern papers a little bit better. Probably the reason that I didn't scrapbook these photos earlier is because the colors in these photos are a little drab. There are a lot of earth tones and there's not a lot of bright colors. And I have to remind myself that when I have photos like this, I don't have to scrapbook them with the same colors. I can choose brighter colors and colors that I think are more interesting. I want them to go with the photos in some way. I want them to have a relation to the photos, but I don't feel like I have to use all the same colors. So that's what I did here. I wanted to pull out some colors like orange and yellow and blue. And I like that because that makes me more enthusiastic to scrapbook. What I did was I sprinkled down some water on the background and I sopped that up with a paper towel and that adds variation to the background. Now I'm going in with some black jewels. First I had a little bit larger ones and then I decided to use the tiniest ones. And I put one in each corner and I have photo corners on all of the photos in all of the corners on this particular layout. I don't always do that, but I like the way it looked on this layout. There's no overlapping of photos and so I kind of thought that was the best choice visually for the layout. Now that I have all the jewels down, I decided that I wanted to put some yellow on the background too. And I end up liking this addition. It goes with the papers and I think that it just adds a little bit of, I don't know, brightness to the skyline. Since I didn't end up using that blue shape on the top of the layout, I decided that it would be perfect for journaling cards. I did have to cut out another one though because the journaling lines went the wrong way on that one on the left hand page. But that's okay. I inked the edges and now I'm just tucking this piece under the photo and I have to confer with my daughter for the journaling on this particular layout. She's really helpful so I have no worries that she's going to help me out with that but I do do that after I'm all done with the layout after I'm you know done with the video and it's there's no journaling in the photos. Now I'm adding some clouds in. I don't think that this ended up having any kind of a major impact on the layout. The blue is a little too subtle for these clouds to really make a huge difference. I could have done a couple of things. I could have gone in and made them more gray or I could have put a line around them with a marker. In the end, I decided that I was just going to paint them white. I'll do that in a minute. So I'm still bothered by that orange. It's still not bright enough for me because you could see in the pattern paper, it's a super bright orange. So I really wanted it to be a brighter orange. So now I'm going in with a color bloom spray from Prima and those sprays tend to be very bright. 
and this was the last orange that I added so I was satisfied with the orange. Here's where I go back and I paint those clouds white. I'm using some white acrylic paint. Still didn't really have any great impact on the visibility of the clouds, but they do add a little something, especially when you see it in person. And when you uh, try to paint things, I don't know if you ever tried it before, when you try to paint things that you have made out of texture paste, they're very easy to paint because they're raised up off the surface. And if I was to get a little paint on the background, it really wouldn't matter. Now I'm going back in with another layer of blue. I think that when you add layers of watercolor, it makes such a difference. So I just thought adding a little bit more of the blue would just enhance the intensity of the color. I found these letters. I'm not sure why I like them so much. I feel like they look a little bit, maybe like 1920s, like Art Deco kind of letters. I don't know if that's correct, but they just made, they just spoke New York to me. So I thought these were nice. They are black. They're just the right size. They're glittered. I tried to use my ruler, but that Y stuck to my ruler and so did the O. But in the end, that helped me to make it straight. Once I had the larger letters down, I looked back into my stash to find some smaller letters that I thought would look good with the letters that I already had down. I wanted the title to be in a New York minute, so I found these little round K and Company letters and I thought that those were a good addition to the title. Titles can sometimes be a challenge for me. My daughter gave me a suggestion that I've been using. She suggested that I Google whatever the topic is and puns. And I found that Googling in that way helps me find lots of titles, even titles that are not puns. I'm using these Paper House stickers. They're clear stickers. And I'm just adding a couple of little stars and little arrows and sprinkling those around the page. I also added that traffic light down on the bottom right. And I didn't put too many embellishments on this page. I felt that the mixed media was the focal point, but I didn't want to leave the rest of the layout totally bare. So you could see that there's just a couple of little touches of stickers that I spread around the page. I decided that I wanted to have one black and one gold sticker up on top. And so I used a little dental tool that I have in my stash and that worked well to peel up that sticker. I'm erasing the line that I drew earlier with a pencil to show where the photo was, and that is the last touch on the layout. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Thank you so much to Janet for asking me to be in this hop. I'm looking forward to checking out the videos of all the other scrapbookers who are participating in this hop, and you can find all the links in the description box. I hope everybody has a great day, and I hope if you like this video, you'll give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you all again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.